You know, it's incredible how high the water is. I can never remember a time in 50 years that this water has been this high. I'm sure maybe it has been, but one sense it's a really good thing because obviously the water was high enough that all the walleye should have got into the good marshes and spawned and definitely the water staying high enough now so that fry when it hatches it'll be able to get back into the river. Now all we need is some warm weather so we can get that zooplankton built up so these fish the young of the year have something to feed on. Hey everybody, welcome back to Larry Smith Outdoors. This week we're up on the Wolf River. And I'll tell you what, I can never remember a year that this water has been this high. Extremely high. You know, I've been coming up here and fishing this probably for over 40 years. And this is very unique to see the water this high, which is a good thing because it allows the walleyes to get back into the marshes. I'm sure that all the main marshes were full. I'm sure they had a great spawn. Now the fry is hatching out and it'll be able to make its way back into the main channel as long as the water stays high. And when you look at it this high, there's no way that it's not. You know, river fishing is one of my favorite things to do. You say, why is that, Larry? Well, I'll tell you why it is. Because you know what, typically the river fishing because of the current is more consistent. And when you have high water like this, this year, these fish are gonna stay up here pretty much all summer long, as long as the water stays high. There's gonna be plenty of food for them up here. It should be a great year. There's not a lot of timber in this section that we're fishing, so I'm not gonna use the weedless, but when we do get into some heavier timber, I'll use the, the weedless. But right now, I'm basically just gonna start off. I'm gonna put an orange on, and then I'm gonna put on a chartreuse. Let's see which one works all better. Here we go. That felt like a white bass because it's more of a tap tap. And what you'll see with the walleyes is they'll basically just grab it. Let's see what we got. Yep, white bass on that one. It's kind of nice to see. You know, all winter long, we were out on the main lake at Winnebago and we saw very few white bass out there. So it's amazing. Uh, we just came up river here and a couple guys were there and they had actually quite the pile of them in their boat already. So it's neat to see that there is some white bass left in the system. That guy can live for another day. and. Not what we're quite looking for. Fish on the right hand, snag on the other one. I'll tell you what, I had to let that fish, I just missed one right before that, you guys. The key is to always make sure you use light rods like I'm using and to let that fish turn for sure. Here it is. Oh, no net today. We left it in the other boat. Let's see what we got here. It's a decent fish. You know, typical Winnebago 14 incher right there. Just barely got them too on that. That one, I've got that slow poke on there. Hey, Hunter, I think maybe you should change your jig a little bit. Probably. Dark days, dark colors. Right away, you went with the chartreuse. I went with the dark one. All right, nice deal. There it goes. Just that, I mean, it's amazing how much time you got to give them. And actually sometimes, you know, and I used to be that way too, set the hook too soon is that I'll make us, the clients actually put the rods down if they keep setting the hook too soon. Here's a decent fish right there. Another decent wally. You know. Tell you what, that one just absolutely grabbed it. I didn't have a chance to do anything with it. Be surprised if it's a walleye. Oh, and you know why? Because he actually snagged himself. He's trying to pin the bait on the bottom and got the hook in the old chicaroni. But it is another fish for me and my team. Smith team versus Hunter Flanders. Today we're actually just fishing up above Gill's Landing right here on the Wolf River. And we're fishing basically a big flat. Um, most of the water we're, we're drifting over is eight to 12 feet. A uh, mixture of little bit of little bit of gravel in there. Um, more of a sandy, silty bottom. Um, not typically like you would think where you'd be in the deeper holes. What does help out is today there's not a lot of pressure up on the river because that's one thing you will see when you are working these flats and you start getting 10 to 30 boats on them. They will push them fish deep into some of the deeper holes or, and actually push them fish right out of the area. Pretty cool. What do you got, a snag going there? He gets the snags, I'll catch the walleyes. This little male again. Again, 
Now what I did is I lost actually a couple jigs. There's a few snags in there, so I went with the weedless slow poking. No snags, just fish. You know, the other mistake people make is using too heavy of a jig. You want a jig that just barely skips that bottom and isn't grinding through the mud and through the rocks and the trees all the time. So don't go too heavy. Plus when the, when the walleyes pick it up, if it's too heavy, a lot of times they'll spit it out right away. So try to get away. Typically, I don't go much bigger than an eighth ounce jig when I'm dragging in a river. You know, the key to is we're drifting down the river here and uh, letting the current do all the work is basically don't move that rod, don't shift it left to right, don't even jig it most of the time. Once in a while, what you'll find out is if the fish, what happens is that walleyes are all facing upstream and when they grab that crawler coming by them, they're actually gonna grab it and hang onto the back and they'll actually slide down, down, down current like this and they won't inhale it all the way till they're coming this way uh, straight and then, oh, and then you want to set the hook. See that fish just hanging on there, that walleye? He, the key is you got to let them turn around and come down river, downstream with the bait before you set the hook. And then you still miss them. Should have gave them a little bit more time, folks. Can't get them all. Okay, basically the boat, we just stopped it. I'm using the bow mount to control me from going in and out to, so I don't get too close to the bank. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast upstream as far as I can cast it. Got an eighth ounce jig today on there. We're moving about 1.2, 1.4. Uh, we're in about six to 12 feet of water. I'm gonna set this rod down, grab my other rod. Same thing, using a slow poke jig, eighth ounce. Got a weed guard on there because there's a few more snags where we're fishing now some timber and a lot of times some fish will lay right in the timber right there. The key is that you want that jig to drag the bottom but you don't want it grinding the bottom. So you just want it skipping skipping the bottom. You can either lay the rods down or you can hold on to them. And the, the big thing is do not shift the rod left to right or really jig it. Just kind of hang on to it and wait for the feel of that, that fish to grab it. And, and I think the biggest mistake people make when they're dragging in a river like this is that they set the hook too soon. I typically will let the fish like pull on it, I call it a surge, at least six to eight times before I set the hook on it. The other mistake that people make so many times is that they think they're getting snagged and they pull the rod forward to try to pull it out of the snag and really that's the walleye grabbing it. So you definitely do not want to touch that rod. Even if it is a snake, just let the natural movement of the boat and the current pull you through because a lot of times it'll actually pull itself free. Like right now, that was a snake. That's the other key part about using a weedless. You don't want to quick pull the rod forward because what it does, it actually pushes the bristles of the weed guard down. So just naturally let it flow through. Hey, I'll tell you, here's a really good tip too. Um, I hate when my rods are all tangled together and a lot of times I won't use the sleeves. Is basically, I'll just wrap them like this. It's super simple, about six wraps on them. You can put as many rods as you want together and very seldom do they get tangled. You know, basically what we wanted to do today is come out and show everybody the proper way to drag jigs on a river. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed our video. And remember, like I always say, it's a great day to be alive.